everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today, we're going to be installing my new ZWO electronic autofocuser on my brand new Carbon Star 200 OTA. Now, if you don't own the Carbon Star 200, don't worry. This same general process will work on most Newtonian telescopes. So if you're trying to install an electronic autofocuser onto your Newtonian, you're going to want to make sure to watch this video. And if you enjoy this video or find it useful, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any future content. Now let's jump in and install the ZWO electronic autofocuser on my Carbon Star 200 OTA. Before we jump into installing the EAF onto our OTA, let's acquaint ourselves with what we're gonna find in the box. We're gonna see the instruction manual which is a good idea to kind of thumb through and just get yourself acquainted. There's some good information in there to know. Underneath the instruction manual, we're gonna see our cabling, which this is what we're gonna to use to connect the focuser into your acquisition software. We have the hardware that we're gonna to use to connect the autofocuser to our OTA. We have the Allen keys that match the hardware that we're gonna be using. We have the bracket that we're gonna to use to connect the autofocuser to our OTA. We have the autofocuser itself. And finally, we have different couplers. Now, the reason that we have different couplers, each of these couplers has a different size shaft that it's able to accept. This allows the ZWO electronic autofocuser system to adapt to most OTA focusers. One quick tip before we jump into installing the electronic autofocuser. What I recommend is set up your OTA as if you're trying to image. Have your camera installed, all of the accessories, put the OTA on the mount, and set it up for declination balancing. In other words, right ascension parallel to the ground and declination positioned so that your OTA is parallel to the ground. And what you're looking for is does your OTA want a nosedive? In other words, the aperture heading towards the ground, or does your OTA want a tail dive? The tail of the OTA heading towards the ground. Now, of course, you can slide the OTA back and forth within the tube rings, and that's the proper way to set balance. But if you're running out of room for adjustment with that, one thing that you can do to help offset is place your focuser or your electronic autofocuser on one side or the other of the OTA's focuser assembly. In other words, if your OTA tends to want to nosedive, you may want to place your electronic autofocuser at the back of the focuser. This helps offset some of the weight towards the back. On the flip side, if your OTA wants to tail dive, you may consider placing your electronic autofocuser at the front of the focuser assembly. This helps offset some of the weight towards the front of the OTA. This is very similar to rotating your OTA in the tube rings to position your camera upside down, thus bringing more of the weight towards the axis. Now, one step that I like to do before I install an electronic autofocuser is rack my focuser a little bit. I don't want to have it maxed in one way or another. What this does is just give some room for the electronic autofocuser to move on its first attempt. So if you're maxed out one way or another and you accidentally give it a command in the direction that it's maxed, you risk damaging the focuser. So racking it in or out a little bit, just give it some room helps avoid that. Now, if you have a dual speed focuser, such as what you see here, the knob that you're gonna remove in order to install the electronic focuser is gonna be the knob opposite the dual speed. In order to remove the knob, if you take a look, you're gonna see a little set screw, and that's gonna be located right here. On this step, you wanna be careful. Even though the ZWO electronic focuser comes with 
Allen keys or Allen wrenches, sometimes they may not fit. In other words, the Allen wrench that came with my autofocuser, it fits within the set screw for the focuser knob, but it has quite a bit of play. You don't want to round that out. That could be a nightmare trying to get it out. So I'm going to use my own Allen wrench, which has a much better fit. And what you're going to do is just rotate it counterclockwise and just loosen it up. Once the set screw is loosened up, the knob should pull right off. Now, once you have the knob off, what you're going to end up noticing on some setups, you may have a flat area on the shaft. If your focuser has a flat area on the shaft, you're going to want to line up one of the grub screws from the coupler with that flat spot. Now, speaking of couplers, the couplers that we had in the box for the ZWO focuser, you're going to have one side on every single coupler that's the same exact size. The opposite side is going to be a different size. What you want to do is find the coupler that fits the shaft on your focuser assembly. Some may be too big, some might be too small. You'll know when you find the right size coupler. That's the coupler that we're going to use. Now, the side that the size all match on every single coupler, that's going to be the side that goes into the electronic autofocuser. The next thing to pay attention to is the mounting point for the bracket. On this particular focuser assembly, we have a threaded hole here, and then we have a threaded hole here. That's going to be where the ZWO electronic autofocuser bracket connects. Now, if you run into a situation where you want to rotate or put the electronic autofocuser at the rear, and you have a dual speed focuser like you see here, simply removing these four screws will release the knob assembly and then you can take it and switch it around in order to mount the electronic autofocuser on the other side. If you don't have a dual speed focuser, you should simply be able to just remove the knob on the side that you want to put the electronic autofocuser. Now this part could vary depending on the focuser assembly. In most cases, this should work. Now, if we take our bracket and we line it up, we can see that that middle slot is going to line up with the mounting holes on our focuser assembly. If for some reason your focuser assembly does not have the threaded holes in the middle here, Sometimes you should be able to use these four screws as the mounting location. That could sometimes line up with the bracket itself. Now, if they do line up with the bracket, you are going to need to get longer screws from your local hardware store. What you would do is remove the four screws and then you would use the longer screws that you got in order to mount the bracket. If that does not line up, then you may need to look into an aftermarket bracket kit. Now it's important to understand that not all focuser assemblies are compatible with electronic autofocusing. If you're not able to find a bracket that fits, you may need to make a custom bracket. So now that we have a basic idea of how everything works, Let's go ahead and install the electronic autofocuser onto the OTA. For this particular setup, I'm actually going to install the electronic autofocuser on the front of the OTA. Now, I have a feeling that this is going to yield a little bit too heavy on the nose side, but because of the controls at the front, I wanna make sure that I have easy access to them, placing it at the rear, could interfere. And if they do, then I'll go ahead and switch it around. 
To get started, I'm gonna go ahead and locate the coupler that'll actually fit my OTA. And I believe that's gonna be this one right here. Yep, the rest of them are gonna be a little bit too big. And then I believe this one's probably gonna be a little bit too small, which it is. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna go ahead and slip the coupler onto the electronic autofocuser. Now the electronic autofocuser has that D shaft that I was talking about earlier. Let's see if this can get focused on it. But you can see that flat spot. We wanna line up one of the grub screws with that flat spot. Now it's important to understand, do not fully tighten anything yet. We're gonna make sure that everything aligns and then we'll do final torque after. So I'm gonna go ahead and snug this grub screw onto the autofocuser. Again, not too tight. We wanna make sure that we can move things around so we can get everything lined up the way that it should. The next thing that we're gonna do is attach the bracket onto the electronic autofocuser motor. What you wanna do is take the bracket, make sure that the L piece is facing towards you and that the long side is on the same side as the coupler. What I'm gonna do is use the smaller screws that come with the electronic autofocuser, as those are the ones that fit in the motor assembly. And then I'm gonna use washers between the bolts and the bracket. Again, we don't wanna to go too tight. We just wanna make sure that everything holds together and then we'll go ahead and align it once we're done and then we'll do our final torque. Once you're done, it should look something like this. Next, what we're gonna do is align the bracket with the focuser assembly and then also slip the coupler onto the focuser assembly shaft. And then what we're gonna do is install the screws. Now I'm using washers on this as well, just to make sure that everything holds. And then once we're done, we're gonna make sure to align everything. Now you wanna make sure that the coupler doesn't bind. That's gonna be the most important part. So you want the autofocuser shaft to be aligned with the focuser assembly shaft. Once you have everything aligned, go ahead and snug all of the bolts. One other thing to keep in mind is make sure that your coupler isn't rubbing up against the autofocuser or the focuser assembly. That can cause binding. You can adjust that by moving your bracket forward or backward. If you're misaligned as far as left to right, simply slide the autofocuser motor back and forth on the bracket over here. Once your electronic autofocuser motor and bracket are aligned, the next step is tightening up the coupler. Now it's possible that the coupler will be in an awkward position where you cannot reach the grub screws, and that's okay. Simply go ahead and connect your electronic autofocuser to your acquisition software and run it from there. Or if you have an external hand controller, give the electronic autofocuser power, plug in the hand controller and drive it using the controller. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the external drive buttons, and I'm gonna rack the focuser until the grub screws become visible. Now, before I tighten anything, what I wanna make sure of is that my coupler is not contacting the OTA's focuser assembly or contacting the electronic autofocuser motor assembly. If I need to give it more room, I'm simply gonna go ahead and loosen up the two mounting screws on the bracket and move the bracket away from the focuser assembly to allow more room on the coupler. 
Once I ensure that my coupler is where I want it to be, I'm gonna go ahead and snug down the, the grub screws. Now, if your OTA's focuser assembly had a round shaft, you can go ahead and tighten the grub screws now. If your OTA's focuser assembly had a flat spot in a shaft and you were not able to access the grub screws, you're gonna to wanna to rack the focuser one way or the other by hand until you locate the flat spot on the shaft. And you can do that by simply just moving the grub screw until it just touches the shaft and then rotate the shaft until you feel it catch that flat spot. Once you feel the flat spot, go ahead and finish torquing the grub screw. What we're gonna do here is continue racking until we get to the other grub screws. And now I'm gonna go ahead and torque the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it back. And I'm gonna do one final torque. Once I'm happy with the torque that I have on the grub screws, we now have an electronic driven focuser assembly. One final thing that you wanna do is rack the focuser a pretty good distance Make sure that your coupler is not binding, rubbing, or flexing in any way, shape, or form. What you'll notice here is that we have these little slits within the coupler. Those are designed to have some flex in them, but you don't wanna have too much. You wanna make sure that it maintains as straight as possible. So I hope you found this video useful, and if you did and wanna help support the channel, Check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you and your support helps me bring you more content. Another way you can help support the channel is checking out my High Point Scientific Affiliate link if you're in the market for some new gear. It doesn't cost you anything extra and the support helps me keep the channel growing. Also, do me a favor. That channel icon that popped up? Hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any future content. Drop a comment in the comment section. Are you considering electronic autofocusing? Did you find this video useful? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.